Many missionaries who answer the call of God to other nations do so entirely by faith. Well, today's guests have done just that, and they have an extraordinary story of the faithfulness of God. Alex and Marilyn Onkili are here to talk about their ministry in Southeast Asia and the many miracles they have seen. This program is sure to inspire you, so stay tuned. Welcome to Lifeline Today. So glad you've tuned into the program. We have a great guest lined up for you today, Joan. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful couple named Alex and Marilyn on Killy, and they have their son, Jesse, came with them when we taped. Yeah, and Dick, you met up with this couple in Korea when yeah. you were there last March. Just yeah. tell us a little bit about well, how... Well, Ryan, our son-in-law, and our, went to Korea in March of 2018. And, you know, we just had an amazing time, but this family are part of the core of the whole Watchman ministry that hosted that gathering. There was thousands there in Korea. And uh, we just connected with them. So when they told us their story about Malaysia and what they were doing and their journey of faith, uh, I really noticed that Alex really seemed to connect with Ryan and, and they had seemed to have a <laughs> lot of common things to share. But we were really, really impressed with the spirit of this couple, especially their walk of faith, their, their uh, dedication to being missionaries. You know, Joan, when you listen to someone like this, Mm. It reminds you that those of us who are not missionaries, who live in North America, really have it relatively easy yeah. compared to these folks. And also reminds us that we should support people who are missionaries, who are out there on the field yeah. working. Yeah. That's one thing. And then pray for them. Yeah. And, uh, but it also should remind us that we need to have that kind of dedication when we serve the Lord right yeah. here in our own That's country right. and in our own churches and in our own families. And so... I think that's a good mm -hmm. lesson to be learned. You're going to learn a lot about this. They do live in a nation where it's not that easy to share the gospel. In fact, it's, it actually could be dangerous. Yeah. And uh, they do reference that. There's been some times when there's been danger because of where they're at. But they are touching people in a very, very unique part of the world. And we're going to go and hear their interview right now. Well, we caught up with them a little earlier. Mm -hmm. And so we recorded their interview just a little while ago. So let's go to Alex and Marilyn right now. So I'm from Malaysia. I'm from the small island of Borneo. That's the east side of Malaysia, East Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, so I was uh, part of a family of eight uh, siblings. And um, when I was young, when I was about uh, 10 years old, I, my father passed away. And, um, and before that, 10 years before that, my sister married a Canadian and they migrated to Canada. Mm. So when my, my father passed away, and then three years after that, my mother passed away. So we kind of lived as, as orphans at that time. Mm. So my sister who migrated to Canada invited me to come and join them in, in Canada. How yeah. old were you? At that time when they invited me, I was about 12. 12. Really? Yes. And then when I left Canada, it was, I mean, when I left Malaysia, I was 13, uh, no, 15 years old, right? 15 years old when you came to Canada. Yeah. 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 Must have been a really difficult move for you. It was really hard. And, um, and I wasn't a Christian then. Yeah. And as a young person who have, um, who mom, mother and father passed away, I think I went through a very, very traumatic time during that time. So my of life course. actually went downhill from then on. Mm. Yeah. And I was involved in, in, fighting and, and drinking, and even at such a young age. And, mm -hmm. and because we live in the village, we, there is no restriction on age on drinking. So there's a lot of those things going on. And I knew that if I stayed in Malaysia, that I would probably end up in, in jail or, or somewhere worse than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I received the invitation to come to Canada, I, was, I felt in my heart like, wow, this is my opportunity to have a, diff a new beginning, a different life than what Isn't I was about to, to go into. It gave you hope. Yes. Give me hope. Yeah. So how, how did you two meet them? So when I, um, so I came to, to Canada, to Vancouver, and when I landed in Vancouver, my sister um, went to a church where her parents also went to church, same church. Yeah. And the first time I met Marilyn was actually at the airport. And my sister got a whole bunch of the young people to come to the airport to greet me as I landed in Vancouver and to greet me to right. enter into Canada. And, and the one thing that I realized about the people that I was meeting at that time was that the smile on their face was so full of life. 
Okay. And here I am coming from, you know, all this, this fighting and, and all this, you know, life of drinking like that, yeah. looking to fill up that, that emptiness. When I saw their smile, I was like, wow, I want what they have. Really? And one of them was Marilyn. That's, yeah. awesome. That's the first time I met her. <laughs> and what he didn't know is our church, the youth group, had been praying for little brother Alex for two yeah. years. Yes. Really? So because you knew he was we coming. Knew, right. We knew the father passed away. We knew mother passed away. Yeah. We prayed through all that. We knew they were trying to get the immigration, the papers. Yeah. You know, he's an orphan. How do you get the papers through? So mm -hmm. our youth group felt like we knew this little brother Alex. We were expecting this short little guy to show up because his sister is about to hear on me. <laughs> and here he comes, this little brother who's this big guy who we had been literally praying for for two years by name. Must have been wow. exciting, huh? It was. See? It yeah. was. He had no idea what had gone in behind him getting there. And, and So, Alex, is this where you came to know the Lord in the church there in Vancouver? Yes, this is where I came to know the Lord. Two months later, I went to a uh, camp. And it was at that camp in... Uh, that I gave my life to the Lord. Mm. And wow. It was really, really amazing at that time. This is Canada's call, you know. <laughs> <laughs> people come? Just so you know, people yeah. come it's and awesome. they, they receive the Lord. And then a lot of times they go back with what they've gotten from or, God. Or can touch the nation. Or can touch the exactly. nation. Right. <laughs> and right. so you were married. And I want to know, you know, the beginning. Tell us about how this life of faith began. Because, I mean, really, you today you don't hold jobs you just do what god is telling you to do and you believe god for the money and you go all over the world yeah. mm -hmm. ministering so how did it start start it was mm -hmm. quite a process really yeah. uh, we both had regular jobs and loving the lord through our regular jobs loving people that felt like even though it was full-time work it felt like ministry we were passionate for young people serving mm -hmm. the young people at church, mm -hmm. um, different things like that. And, and there's just such a long story. But eventually he was youth pastoring. And you've got to understand, when I married this boy from Borneo, from yeah. East Malaysia, you need to consider going back to their culture at some point. But in my case, I never thought of it for a second because <laughs> it was a no-brainer. He ain't going back. Yeah. You know, it was, he left that forever. Yeah. He loved his family that was there. For sure, we'd go visit them. We'll spend time with them. Yeah. But it was never an issue to me or my parents that one day he'd take me back to his mm -hmm. country. It was just yeah. a no-brainer. ain't going to mm -hmm. happen. But then, you know, obviously things really changed. And so the first time the Lord spoke to Alex and said, I want you to stop everything. Um, and I want you to leave your full-time job as a youth pastor, and I want you to give one year to Malaysia. Take your family, and let's go back and, mm -hmm. and excuse me, give one year. And that was a shaking word that we actually thought there's no way on earth this is from the Lord. How did you confirm those words when you got them? I mean, you had to have some kind of counsel and input and, and mm -hmm. you know, things that God would do to confirm the word. Yeah. The, actually, the, when I first heard it, I said, this is not from God. Yeah. But I said, yeah. <laughs> no way. I wrestled with the Lord for three days. Mm -hmm. And eventually I said, Lord, if this is really a word from you, you have to speak to my wife. And That's a good thing. And then I felt the Lord spoke to me saying that, no, you need to tell your wife about this. And every other time, he's always spoken yeah. to both of us separately. And that's been the confirmation. Okay. But right. this time was slightly different. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, in fact, eventually I took the, uh, the time and sat with Marilyn. I told her about what the Lord spoke to me about going back to Malaysia for one year. And first, we, we didn't really believe it, but after we prayed much about it and, and we realized that this is from the Lord, and then eventually we brought it up to my senior pastors and then our mentors also. And I was hoping that for them to say that, no, this is not from the Lord, you can stay here. Because I even argued with the Lord. I said, Lord, aren't I'm a missionary here in Canada already. Why do you have to send me back to Malaysia? I'm a missionary. I'm from Malaysia here. I'm a missionary in, in Canada. So, so. But I think a key thing for us, and just to go right back to your question and, and nail it, is this has been our whole story for our whole journey, is hearing from the Lord, and, and first we do have a sensing in our heart that this is the Lord, He's nudging us, He's mm -hmm. speaking to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we've always walked with an older generation, and yes. we've been so blessed in That's the natural so awesome. and in the spiritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now our son is the younger generation. So we've always walked as three generations, and there's such a beauty and safety in that. Yeah. So when we're hearing these far out crazy things, yes. we can mm -hmm. take them after we've gone before the Lord and we've dialogued together with the Lord, with each other, we can then go to that older generation, whether it be my natural parents or spiritual leaders, you know, it's usually both pastors and those we really respect and know also hear from the Lord and we throw it out to them and we get that confirmation and there's a safety in walking that way. 
Yeah, well, maybe we'll just start with this book okay. because this, Marilyn, is a book that you have written right. called Two Hour Dance. Right. But it, the whole book is the story of uh, you, uh, God's faithfulness, you hearing from God, you obeying God in your journey and how he has supernaturally supplied and, uh, and brought you to, well, really all around the world now. But you called your book Two Hour Dance and there is a little chapter in there explaining the two hour dance and I think that w our viewers need to hear what you mean by two hour dance right. and uh, and really that has been key to your journey the lesson you learned there has been key to your journey mm -hmm. since then so tell us about the two hour dance all right mm -hmm. I usually tell people they have to read it and I don't give it away but this time I will because <laughs> <laughs> it is key and the book was written with the first chapter and the last chapter yes about the tell two the hour story dance. and then it's like the two mm -hmm. bookends because that really is what our life is about is mm -hmm. that analogy and two hour dance is an analogy where uh, we were in Malaysia. It was a big project. The Lord mm -hmm. asked us to spearhead. We were calling together literally all the tribal peoples of the state we live in. And so... Um, every, These are the indigenous The indigenous, people. right. The indigenous, right. First Nations, tribal. Yeah. In Malaysia, we call them tribal, but yeah. the same thing. So they are all coming together across different tribes, right? Coming yeah. together. And mm -hmm. it had never been done like this before, believers, specifically believers. And we were coming together just to worship, kind of a gathering style where we're just going to celebrate the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. as they came together, we knew one part was food that was critical. So we had all this food laid out for mm -hmm. them <laughs> from wild boar, you know, to all these rice wraps. And it just it was this festival time of just celebrating the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. He asked, to do, asked us to do it all by faith. So there was no registration fee. We didn't want to put any barriers and limits on the people mm -hmm. from coming. We didn't know how many people to expect. We were targeting 1,000, 2,000 showed up. And it was wow. just this time of celebration. We They came in their tribal costumes. So mm -hmm. every tribe has their own costume, right? Mm -hmm. And you can tell by looking at them what tribe they're with. Mm -hmm. And they're proud of that. And so mm -hmm. after we've been eating and celebrating, one of the things we had planned was to do a couple dances. That culture has a dance that goes along with their culture. So we had different dancers prepared. Some were Sunday school classes that lived in the jungles hours away. S some were older Amazing. people, some were younger. They'd been preparing for months. Mm -hmm. So they're there and they're doing these dances on stage. And it's one group that comes up. We were gonna have three groups. So one group comes up and it was supposed to be two or three minutes. It went on and on and on. It was beautiful. They come down, another group goes up and it goes on and on and on. It was wonderful, beautiful, but it just kept going. And the MC <laughs> guy who was in charge just kept calling up new teams of dancers. And we're looking at our clock. You know, yes, we want the Holy Spirit to lead this thing, but on the other hand, you do have a little bit of an idea of what it's gonna look like, and it wasn't gonna look like a whole night of dancing, mm -hmm. right? So we're getting a little anxious, and people start coming to us, knowing that we're in charge of the whole night, <laughs> especially mm -hmm. Alex, the pressure starts coming. Yeah, You've gotta shut right. this thing down, aren't you aware of the time? We've got Mr. David Damien here, we've got all this stuff going on, but we're running out of time. But the Lord just kept making it so clear to us that he was in this. It didn't look like what we thought it should look like. But so the dances just kept going. And when I'm saying two-hour dance, I'm literally meaning for two hours we sat and watched different tribal people groups come <laughs> up and do their dancing. Beautiful, but so long. And again and again and again. The worship team is going, we're running out of time. People are saying, don't you know David Damien's here? We're like, yes, we know. So does the Holy Spirit. But we don't get it. But this is beautiful. We got to keep going. The Lord would just whisper confirmation to us like worship has begun. Yeah. This is worship. Yes, These people right. are not dancing for you. They're dancing unto me. This is their worship to me. You know, mm -hmm. so, okay, Lord, okay, we be confident again to keep letting it go. Anyways, long story short, after the two hours finished, it was done. And someone came up and, you know, David shared a few words and God was there. Dynamic, powerful you know, time of an altar call where the tribes came forward, held hands, weeping, just a unity came upon us, mm. reconciliation, just beautiful mm. end of night. So what had happened was a lot of people had missed that final bit because they were there and the dances were continuing and they thought that's all this is, so they left. Mm. So they missed that wow moment at the yes. end where the breakthrough came. Yeah. But what we didn't know and didn't find out till a week later is during that time there were undercover police in our mm. midst and they had the big cameras out and they were rolling to catch us in a muslim nation mm. at a christian event 
doing something that they could catch us on. Yeah. Now, right. legally we weren't, but there were all kinds of potential opportunities for them mm-hmm. to come in. Mm-hmm. God hid to us that they were even there, so we didn't have that anxiety. But a couple of our security guards were fully aware of their presence. Hmm. So they were there, and after two hours, guess what? Right? They also thought, this is not the spiritual mm-hmm. Christian thing we thought it was. It's mm-hmm. purely cultural. Right. So they packed their bags, packed their cameras, got mm-hmm. in the car, and off they drove. It was minutes after they drove down the road that the dancing stopped. Wow. And that the, the Alex went on stage and welcomed and celebrated, and David went up, and yeah. the altar call happened, and God did his thing. And they mm-hmm. never saw a thing. Yeah. So the Lord told me later, this is an example of your life. When I'm doing things, and you think I'm way off track, yeah. and you think that I've abandoned you or forgotten you, you think this trial is going on forever and there's no end to it. Yeah. But actually in that trial and in that long drawn out process, I'm right in the midst of it. Yeah. I'm protecting you and I'm walking you into what I have for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. And so that's the wow. background in the nutshell of the two hour dance. Wow, that's, that's an amazing story. And it I also is. just want to comment for our viewers. <laughs> You know, again, in Canada, we know nothing about this. But this is a reality in many parts of the world. And I would just want to say in that part of the world, Southeast Asia, uh, the gospel is growing at such a rapid rate that there is some pushback by governments and by other parties that are really um, uh, hindering the gospel and and persecuting believers. You know, I really believe we're living (laughs) what the Bible describes as the last days, you know. And But the exciting thing about that is the harvest that is coming into the gospel, into the body of Christ is amazing. And this is an incredible thing, you know, just that the the Lord's protection on you. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Just the one more thing to throw in there is till this day, I would say 98% of those 2,000 people have no idea about the police being in our midst. Yeah. There's just a few of us that know this. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord told me, sometimes I will show you in the end what I was doing. Yeah. Other times you won't be, you won't get to be in that number that knows about the undercover cops yeah. being in your midst yeah. but can you trust me the same in both yeah. situations so you've gone back and forth between uh between mm-hmm. malaysia borneo and and canada right. so right. i read in your book that you say you have two homes right mm-hmm. oh actually you had a third one in singapore for a little while right. there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you have two homes right. and so um god leads you to be in canada for a short time and then you're back in um, Malaysia, but you've traveled out from Malaysia to different places as well, Mm -hmm. and all by faith. Right. So tell us about some of the most challenging things that God has asked you to do. Mm -hmm. I think every trip has been incredibly challenging. I mean, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we've had a lot of words that we'll be living in abundance and in the plenty, and there'll be more than enough. (laughs) And it's not our reality, you know, what we're seeing day to day yet. But again, maybe that's part of the two-hour dance too, where he's doing something that we don't see or get. But it's, it's been, the financial provision in the past has always been that final confirmation that we're not going crazy mm-hmm. and that we really have heard that we're supposed to get tickets to go to Malaysia or to go mm-hmm. to China or to go to yeah. wherever mm-hmm. it is. But in the recent years, it's shifted a bit. And one mm-hmm. thing we find with the Lord with us is he's never, mm-hmm. his faithfulness is consistent and who he is is consistent, but the way he leads us is very inconsistent. Wow. And we mm-hmm. find that that keeps us dependent on him. Right. So that we can't get comfortable and just go on autopilot without looking to him and trusting yeah. him. I, I got to ask you the question, what is your mandate when you go? When you go to a place, like God says, okay, you're in Canada, go back to Malaysia. Or if you're in Malaysia, go to another country, Singapore. or What, what is your mandate? What do you do? Wow, it's always a hard question to answer because there's so it many is, things. Yeah. But I think two things that we're carrying, um, maybe, like if I can sum it up into three. One is... Um, the Lord put on our hearts many years ago about the unity within the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Because we've we've seen again and again that the greater the unity we have within the body, the greater authority we have. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we love, uh, carry a passion to see particularly first the church leaders in a nation coming Mm -hmm. together Mm -hmm. across denomination, across culture, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all that put aside and say, we just want to come together and seek the Lord. Because you're crying out in your backyard, you're in your church, you're in your church. We're crying out for the same thing. We're crying out for the glory of God to come to this land. What Mm -hmm. if we come together? And we see people weeping and laying down offenses that they've carried for years. And we've seen that the connection that happens Mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Then they go back to their own churches and they have this authority they've never walked in before. People from their congregation and say, what's different about you, Pastor? When you yeah. speak, it's just, you nail it. So that's yeah, the one, is right. crying out for that unity. The other is young people. We've mm. never stopped being passionate. Mm. 
for young people and seeing them stirred up for walking faithfully with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the third is the native peoples. That's an area that we're really caring. So mm -hmm. everywhere wow. the Lord sends us, it hits one, if not yeah. all three. Mm -hmm. And so and so this would be the connection with Watchmen for the yeah, Nations. And of course, your pastors are David, right. Damien and Gideon Chu. Right. And, you know, and is is that uh, is that connection the thing that's brought you to countries all over the world, especially in the last few years? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Help change the spiritual climate of Canada by partnering financially with Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and share in the breakthrough anointing that's on this ministry. Partner $25 a month and receive as a thank you gift Dick DeWert's powerful audio message on CD entitled Realize Your Dream and learn how to find your God-given purpose and see breakthroughs in your life. Partner at $50 a month and we'll send you Dick DeWert's latest audio teaching, The Power of the Anointing plus this distinctive vial of anointing oil from the Holy Land for use in prayer for healing, consecration, protection, and worship. Partner at $100 a month and receive the CDs, anointing oil, plus this special leather-bound journaling Bible personally signed with a note of encouragement by Joan DeWert. Your tax-deductible donation will strengthen this ministry and make a difference in our nation. Call today and say yes to becoming a partner with Dick and Joan. Phone 403-942-0123 or email info at dickandjoan.com today. Do you remember Job, how he lost everything? His family, his business, his health. How he argued with God about all of this. He made his bitter complaint, the Bible says. He asked why, why, why? Did you notice something by the end of the book? God never did answer Job's question. God wanted Job to trust him without an explanation. Do you have a question for God today? Maybe a loved one passed away when you were believing for healing. Maybe you're wondering why a child has gone astray. Why? Why? We often have whys in our heart. But can you trust God without an explanation? Can you say with Job, I lay my hand upon my mouth? If you're struggling with questions today, we want to pray with you. Please give us a call right now. What a great interview with Marilyn and Alex. You yeah. know, uh, <laughs> Their story, I think everybody can relate to because every one of us go through experiences where you go, God, are you here? What is, are you really in control of this situation? And they're telling this phen phenomenal story about how they're unsure why all this stuff is going on way longer yeah. than it's supposed to. And so much more of their story, Dick, is in their book called Two Hour Dance. Yeah. And you can get that book by emailing to TWO twohourdance at gmail.com and you can get your hands on this book. Yeah, the information I really, really enjoyed is it. available on screen. And uh, yeah, they were an awesome <laughs> people uh, to interview and, and really inspira and inspiring. The, and, and then they brought their son Jesse with them yeah. who has traveled with them and ministered with him them all of his life. He said from the beginning of his life, he was ministering with them when he was six they first went to we Borneo. We actually do have a clip of We have uh, a clip Jesse. because I want to play it, Dick, because that man's heart was so precious. I yeah. just thought it was great. Let's just go to that. It's uh, just a very short clip. This is their 21-year-old son. Yeah. You have grew up uh, the son of missionaries. We want to hear your insight. What's that like? Well, I've been in this journey since day one. Yeah. <laughs> we first moved to Malaysia when I was six years old. So six? I Actually, I had to switch to homeschooling, and there's a lot of little things like that that I didn't really enjoy at first, and a lot of things that changed that I wasn't very happy with. And through it all, it was really a process of God just slowly molding my heart into the shape He wants it to be, because it sure wasn't that way in the very beginning. Mm. I know I did a lot of kicking and screaming, and at times <laughs> even crying, because oh. I didn't want to be there. But I can honestly say to you now, at 21 years of age, still living this lifestyle, that I wouldn't have had it any other way. Mm. Really? Wow. God is so faithful. <laughs> I am so blessed to be a part of this family. This yeah. is not scripted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not paying him to say this, honest. I'm just looking. I'm so okay. Yeah. So uh, you must feel the same call that your parents do then. Mm -hmm. Or that somehow that call has made it into your heart. 
Yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. The call that I feel very similar to my parents is family. Wow. I think there's something so special that God has for family. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to say to them, I'll go wherever you go. I'll, I want to be wherever you guys, not necessarily be wherever you guys are, but my heart is behind right. whatever you guys right. do. Wow. Because I know that the, uni the, the unity of the family yeah. is so key and so precious. You know, Jesse was not only referring to family, his, his direct family, but he was uh -huh. also talking about the family, the family of God. Of the God. family aspect of being a, a Christian and in the body of Christ. And this is what he said. He said, it's so precious to yeah. God. You yeah. know. And uh, very inspiring. He's uh, now at the British Columbia Institute of Technology, but he's just really an inspiration there as you listen to his uh, parents who do not live an easy life in some measure, right? They're living by faith mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes even living with uh, a certain degree of risk, you know? Yes, that's right. So this, uh, they become a real inspiration for us. So let me just uh, say, can, you probably can relate to something they said. You probably go through times <laughs> where you wonder, is God really in control? You know, the scripture that comes to mind is from the Psalms, says the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. He delights in their way. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to trust that God actually has your life in his hands and that he is directing your steps. And boy, Joan and I can really relate to the mm -hmm. many times that we go through in ministry or mm -hmm. other times you go, God, are you really here? Have you forgotten us? Yeah. But we need to be reminded, God is always with us. Many times, Dick, we, I've heard people say, well, why is it so long? There are delays. Mm. But I really believe that those delays, God has his hand in those delays. And then there are detours. And sometimes God uh, allows us to take the detour. Sometimes we ourselves just take a detour. And then God has to bring us back on the but path. But he still but works all things together for good. He always is working everything to good. So yeah. that, you know, he's, he's um, protecting us and he's guiding our steps into his perfect yeah. will. I really feel that we're speaking to some people, Dick, who can really relate to that. Absolutely. They feel like God is a million miles away and that he's forsaken. But you know, the last time God spoke to you, nothing has changed since then. Yeah. You know, he hasn't, That's he's right. not like a human. You know, he's, he's different and he never leaves us or forsakes us. He says that multiple times in the scripture. Perhaps mm -hmm. you're feeling that way. I'm going to pray a prayer for you right now that you would just sense his presence as you stand in faith as we close this program today. Lord, we thank you for thank our viewers you, and for those who are really experiencing this sense of abandonment right now. Let them know your reassurance right now. You are with them always, mm -hmm. no matter what is going on around them. Well, thank you for being a part of the broadcast today. By the way, contact our prayer center if you have yeah. a need. We'd love to pray for you. And remember this, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See you next time. Bless you. Bye-bye. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Dick and Joan are now available for conferences and events in your area. To book them for your event, call 587-425-5730 or email info at dickandjoan.com.